Hey, what's going on, guys? Absolutely Beast here, bringing you guys uh, some racing. Uh, this background gameplay is a Forza 6, so there will be no Forza 7 footage in this video, just so we're clear right off the bat, in case you can't read the description or check out some of the other stuff. I appreciate some of the feedback I've got from some of you guys about that kind of stuff, but to me, you know, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's absolutely no advertising of, of gameplay of that. I'll, I'll say this again, I'm just like you guys. I'm a regular person. I have no access to Forza 7 early, and there will be no Forza 7 footage until that game launches, excluding a demo. If they release a demo, I'll surely put up gameplay of that, but I will have absolutely no footage of Forza 7 until the game comes out. So do not expect that from my channel. That's not what this channel is. I'm nobody special. I don't get to, to get early access to these type of things. So this gameplay in the background is Forza 6. Now that I've wasted a minute clearing that up, uh, there was some new cars announced today uh, for Forza on ForzaMotorsport.net. Um, the article I'm reading here, um, I'll link it in the description. I said that last video and I forgot, so forgive me for that, but I will link this article in the description. So um, it's the uh, the week six of the Forza Garage. So it says, here we are at the penultimate week six of car, ooh, excuse me, of car announcements coming to Forza 7. We're shining the spot on a truly unique batch of cars. Forza World fell in love with the custom-built special models that debuted in Forza Horizon 3, and we're pleased to say the Forza Edition cars, as they're now known, will be part of the fun in Forza Motorsport 7. These cars feature unique styles designed to catch the eye, but also custom tuning and special bonuses that will make them must-own additions to every Forza player's garage. So it says, in Forza Motorsport 7, these, these additions, Forza Edition cars will be immediately recognizable, whether they're sporting custom wide-body kits and wheels, or gorgeous liveries. Uh, these these cars will always stand out from the crowd. Beyond the aesthetics you can only find in these edition of cars, you will get a ride that has been fine-tuned by the experts here at Turn 10 and considered every factor, from power to weight ratio, specific suspension settings that will make a Forza car a top choice, Forza Edition car a top choice for all uh, types of four-wheeled fun, including special built-to-drift models. Um, so it talks about how they look great and drive well, but they're also um, increase advantages to progress your career and increase your credit balance. So each of these versions, each of these additions, these Forza Edition vehicles, they have built-in multipliers that are going to enhance a uh, credit reward for racing and winning with it, as well as increase the XP you gain um, while you're behind the wheel. So, uh, you know, I mean, that kind of sounds like a VIP type program to me. So uh, one of you guys asked me in the comments what the VIP program was and what the benefits were. The VIP program on Forza, um, you know, it, it, does, okay, it does offer some cars um, and stuff like that, but the main uh, benefit of the VIP program is that you get extra rewards for driving your cars. You get extra credits and extra um, stuff like that uh, for driving the cars. And so, uh, early on in the game, when you're trying to buy all the cars to go through the career, or when, you, or if you're just have a person that likes to collect a bunch of cars, you know, um, having those extra credits will help. Um, and this car sounds good, by the way. This Challenge Stragali. I'll give you a, a little acceleration here. Anyway, yeah, that's the uh, that's the uh, the channel that I watch the most. My favorite YouTuber, the the Strad Man. That's where he got his name from. Is a Shrelly. Anyway, so uh, these are you know these cars, these Force Edition cars are going to give you XP and credit increases while you're driving them, um, which are going to help you out a lot. You know, for the earlier on stuff. So I'm um, gonna so how do you get your hands on these Force Edition cars? In addition, in addition to being available as a reward in game uh, via the Drivers Cup single player campaign is what that's called. Um, or the Forza-thon events, um, you'll be able to find them in the auction house also, uh, which is returning for this game. Uh, it hasn't been around for uh, a gener uh, game or two, um, but uh, it's the auction house basically is a place where you can take your cars and sell them online onto other people. So, um, but it says here uh, for those of you who want to get a great head start on the on the collect on the edition collection right away, check out our VIP membership, which is available as part of the deluxe and ultimate editions. Uh, Deluxe is $80 and the Ultimate is $100. I honestly can't, even though I got the Ultimate, I can't say I'd recommend that. Um, unless you're just absolutely dying and you can't wait to get the game four more days or you want to play it four or five days early. I mean, I don't think that the pre-order things are going to be anything special. Um, I could be wrong, but generally these type of things are not worth, you know, the extra 40 bucks. You know, the regular game itself just costs 60 so... Um, but for me, I really want to be able to get content up for you guys as early as possible. Get sort of an edge. Um, but so it says all five of the cars uh, included in the VIP pack are Forza Edition cars. 
Um, so they talk about the 1969 Camaro Super Sport, which is the Forza edition. So um, 1969 was the last year of the very first generation of Camaros. They only made them from 66 through 69. Um, and the SS was uh, actually redesigned for the 69 model year. Um, the, cor the entire Camaro itself was redesigned. So um, there's actually a lot of debate among Camaro enthusiasts from the 66, 67, 68 Camaros are a, are a little more rounded. Um, and then you get to 69 and they become a lot more like creased and kind of squarish. Um, and so there's a lot of debate between enthusiasts of which one, you know, which ones look the best. But in my opinion, I, I kind of like the more, I kind of like the mix. Um, I'm not really a big fan of really rounded cars. Um, but also at the same time, you know, like square block cars are just not very nice. So um, this car, man, this car here I'm about to drive, uh, the F333 SP, sounds incredible. Um, and then I do, I drive the uh, the other livery version right after this. But listen to this thing. Oh, I stalled it. Man, this thing just screams, doesn't it? Sounds like a friggin' Formula One car. So, uh, the, you know, trends always switch between squared and rounded. If you look at cars throughout history, every few years they square, they're squared or they're rounded, or they're squared or they're rounded. So. Um, in 1969, they had a, a more of a squared approach to the Camaro. I um, mean, the Super Sport had a bunch of different options for engines, ranging from a 5.7 liter, which is kind of the standard, um, all the way up to a, a 7 liter engine, which is absolutely gargantuan. Um, now, the 7 liter engines originally were not allowed to be produced by Chevy. They weren't allowed to produce, the, they, they themselves uh, limited to, to producing like in the high sixes, like 6.6 .6 liters and stuff like that. But they had a ton of requests from dealers wanting these bigger engines, and since it wouldn't do it, a lot of these dealers were actually swapping in their own engines, like uh, Don Yanko, for example, who created the Yanko Camaro, which is now famous. That's one of the famous cars from, uh, uh, man, that was a close wheel finish. That was one of the main cars from uh, uh, Fast and the Furious, or maybe it was Too Fast, Too Furious. Um, but uh, anyway, th th so they put a 7 liter in those, and uh, they did some, some big stuff with those, which was really cool. So that's a pretty legendary car. Um, the other car says uh, the 2013 Ram Runner. A Forza edition, so that is a Dodge Ram truck. Um, the best way I can describe it is it's basically an equivalent of like a. Wow, that was weird. Oh, that was the same race. Oh, I'm an idiot. So uh, it's basically the equivalent of like the Ford SVT Raptor. So that car was tuned by Mopar, which uh, is a mashup of motor and parts, um, which is owned, which is like a Chrysler uh, thing. So Mopar makes like performance stuff, and uh, they did this Ram Runner edition, which is a 6,000 pound truck. Um, basically sort of like an off-road type uh, Dodge Ram truck. It's based on the 1500. Uh, I think I said it weighs 6,000 pounds. It's a mammoth thing. Um, and it has uh, a big engine and a big V8, and it's just it makes about 400 horsepower. Uh, but it's just sort of like an off-road. You know, it's missing a front bumper and has like a skid plate up there instead and stuff like that, which makes it more suitable for, you know, like desert stuff and off-roading and stuff. So that'll be in there. Um, and apparently that's in Forza Horizon 3, I believe. Um, so the Nissan, uh, the 2012 Nissan GTR, Force Edition. So 2012 um, was was uh, 2011 was the first model year they actually bumped up the power. The GTR came out in I think it was like 08 ish, uh, 07, and for a couple years there they had um, about 485 horsepower, and uh, then they bumped up the power in uh, 2011 and 2012 to like 540 I think or something like that or 525. So a more powerful version. Um, and uh, obviously the GTR is based on the Skyline. Um, the Skyline name has sort of been given up now though. Um, so it's just Nissan GTR, it's their own performance version. Um, twin turbo V6, extremely fast. Uh, you, you know, dual clutch transmission, you know, like three second, zero to 60 time, really, really fast car. Um, obviously has those big legendary tail lights. Um, I mean, everybody knows about the GTR and it's uh, all wheel drive, so it's just a beast. Um, so the 1992 Ford Escort, uh, RS, Force Edition. So the only one of those I could find, the only information I could find on that was a was a uh, 92 Ford Escort RS Cosworth, uh, which was based on the European version. Um, now what they what they do in, in situations like this, they're made for homologation purposes, which basically means that um, they have a race series. In this in this case, it was Group A that they wanted to compete in. And in order to do that, you have to actually use a production car. So they'll actually make cars specifically just to hit a target for production limits just so that they can use a car in, in a racing series. And so that's what they did with this car. So it was a pretty rare car, um, but uh, it was a turbo, a two liter turbo and made 227 horsepower, which you know in the early 90s, that's pretty good um, and about the same in torque. Um, and that's, you know, it's a pretty decorated car and, and uh, RS stands for Rally Sport. 
Um, and so they, so they have the Forza edition of that. Um, and then the 2014 BMW M4 Forza edition, which um, I've talked about the M4 a little bit before in previous videos, but the M4 um, is essentially the M3. Um, but the reason they named it the M4 was because they wanted to differentiate it because the M3 uh, was a naturally aspirated uh, brand of cars. Um, and then, and this, with this new design of this new uh, inline six twin turbo engine, um, they wanted to uh, really separate it and, and really dedicate it as something different. So it's the M4, which is, again, basically the M3, but um, twin turbo, about 400 horsepower. Um, from some reviews I've read and, and some uh, reviews I've watched, it seems like it's a slightly underpowered. Doesn't have quite the same punch, um, and the uh, the inline six cylinder doesn't actually sound very good, um, and I tend to agree with that. Um, the engine sound itself is actually they do this cool thing where they, they, the cabin is extremely insulated, so it's very very quiet and silent in there, reduced from wind noise and all that stuff. But uh, BMW actually uh, takes the sound from the engine and actually pipes it into the speakers of the car um, to give you sort of an amplified um, thing of your car. So that's pretty cool, um, and uh, and that car will be in there. Uh, straight six, which is really rare to find these days. Um, so yeah, and then the last one would be the 2017 Ford GT. Obviously, Ford GT is a legendary car. The GT40 um, was a car, you know, Ferrari had won Le Mans uh, from 1960 through 1965, six years in a row. Um, and there was a, a, a quote secret deal that was going on between Ford and Ferrari where Ford was actually making a bid to buy Ferrari. And uh, after the meeting, Enzo Ferrari pulled out and said, no, I'm not doing it. So there was a lot of speculation that there was some sort of inside thing, and he was trying to get information about Ford and all this kind of stuff. So Henry Ford II was extremely upset and basically decided to just crush Ferrari. So they created the, the Ford GT40, uh, which was based off of the uh, the Lola, uh, and um, they just annihilated Ferrari. The first year they went there into Le Mans, 1966, they finished in first, second, and third, just destroying the competition, and they proceeded to win it the next few years in a row. Um, and so that's a legendary car. And then obviously they remade the car in 05, 06 for, for the 40th anniversary. Um, and then now, of course, they've come out with the 2017 Ford GT, which has, you know, there's a big thing uh, here on the on the uh, article about it. Um, talking about, you know, uh, it's marking the 50th anniversary. Um, it has the new EcoBoost twin turbo uh, V6, which a lot of people question, but it makes 650 horsepower. Um, and they talk about how it has, uh, the Ford GT has one of the highest uh, Ford themselves have said they wanted to have one of the highest uh, horsepower to weight ratios. Um, in fact, there's a Ford GT, Ford GT right there in front of me. Awesome. Um, because it's all carbon fiber. Carbon fiber monocoque with the uh, um, aluminum subframe front and rear and then all carbon fiber body panels. Um, so it's a very light car um, and it has 650 horsepower. And, and uh, obviously they, it's just become a massive thing. I mean, there's everybody in the world is getting one of those things or trying to get one of those things. And so... Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just super excited, guys. Uh, you know, only a couple of cars released today, but uh, I did, you know, I did some research and, and found out some of the cool stuff about these cars because um, uh, these cars interest me, and I'll and I'll probably drive all of them. So, thank you guys for checking out my video. Support's been great again recently. Um, I'll try to keep you guys updated if I find any new information. Um, this one was a little bit lighter as far as you know, new list of cars go, but still exciting nonetheless. And guys, seriously, we're a month away. It's about to happen. It's about to go down. So make sure you subscribe. Check back soon. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Catch you next time. One take. Uh-huh. Yeah.